For centuries, Bible prophecy has baffled the minds of men. Mistranslations and traditions have shrouded the original writings, causing men to disbelieve the authenticity of the inspired Holy Scriptures. Israel Hawkins, pastor and overseer of the House of Yahweh, uncovers the Bible prophecies for these last days. With over 50 years of biblical study and research, this prolific author and spokesman reveals why the destruction of mankind is coming and points to the law and the prophets to show how this destruction can be averted. Due to the demand for accuracy, the Book of Yahweh, the Holy Scriptures, will be used in this program. And now, the prophetic word. Well, greetings, everyone. Once again, this is Israel Hawkins coming to you from the House of Yahweh in Abilene, Texas, and this is the Prophetic Word Show. Uh, living a healthy life uh, uh, or a healthy lifestyle uh, like the one that Yahweh shows in the Holy Scriptures. Uh, there's none better than the lifestyle, and He even gives you foods that you can eat with that will make you healthy. He warns you about other foods that will make you sick, that will uh, uh, cause diseases uh, and sickness. He tells you uh, sexually uh, uh, transmitted diseases, uh, what makes them and, what, how, and how they'll cling to you and, uh, and your husband, how they'll also be put into your children, uh, how you get these diseases. He tells you what to do to keep from getting diseases. Yes, Yahweh gives mankind all of that. Well, of course, Satan comes along and said, has Yahweh told you not to do this? <laughs> and of course, Satan is still coming and, and uh, uh, the, that old serpent who sneaked in on uh, Eve and deceived her, uh, as uh, Yahweh said in Revelations uh, 12 verse 9, that old uh, Satan was cast out, that uh, old devil and Satan, uh, that old serpent called the devil and Satan. Uh, well, the serpent is called the devil and Satan, but she had agents, of course, or had a agent at that time that uh, she used. Uh, the commentators just can't figure this out, who that agent was. Uh, I guess the house of Yahweh is the only one that's ever brought out the truth about the agent that uh, the old serpent used, you know, it wasn't actually a serpent that was talking to her, <laughs> but but um, yeah, she resembled a serpent. And uh, well, she didn't talk to her at all. The but uh, he, the agent of this uh, servant, this serpent, uh, talked to her. The agent on earth talked to Eve, and and uh, and of course uh, they uh, got the message over to her that. Uh, uh, that Yahweh uh, uh, didn't tell them the truth, that the truth was they wouldn't die. And, uh, and of course, the Savior said uh, Satan was a liar from the beginning, and uh, so did his uh, disciples. Said, uh, they said that, uh, no, you don't have eternal life abiding in you. Uh, uh, let, let me read you that uh, in, in 1 John while you're getting a paper and pencil and write these scriptures down so you can study them later. But uh, if you have a King James Version, now I'm reading from the book of Yahweh. Uh, the book of Yahweh uh, was, uh, uh, it was stolen from the people. Uh, Daniel said that they would, uh, uh, the army would uh, stand on his part. Daniel 11.31, talking about the um, the uh, actually talking about the Vatican because the the uh, the people that were prophesied to change the laws turned out to be the Catholic Church and the popes that think to change times and laws. Uh, of course, they think to change it. They can't change Yahweh's laws. Um, those laws are forever. There's no way any man can ever ever change them. Now they, but they think they think to change them, and that's what it, the scripture says there in Daniel seven twenty five. If you want to write that down, please, and read it later uh, uh, after the program is off. And uh, this is a thirty minute program, and uh, you can read this later in these scriptures and see what I'm saying. But 
the Daniel, prophet Daniel, Yahweh's prophet, Daniel. Well, Daniel in 1131 said that, uh, that the army would stand on his part and they would pollute the sanctuary of strength. And of course, uh, uh, then uh, uh, the, the, the Savior said in Matthew 24, if you have a King James Version, I'm still quoting from the book of Yahweh, but uh, Matthew is actually Matitya in the book of Yahweh. The book of Yahweh is named in your Bible in Isaiah, Isaiah 34, 16. It says, search out the book of Yahweh and read. Now, the prophet Jeremiah said that they would cause Yahweh's people to forget his name for Lord. And of course, that's what they did. But who did that? It was, again, the Roman Catholic Church. And they admit changing the name in the Holy Scriptures, but they destroyed the temple in 70 AD. They moved the, all the artifacts to Rome. This is just a matter of history. You could look up uh, General Titus or just look up Titus. Uh, Google it or, <laughs> or look it up in the encyclopedias or whatever. And you'll see that uh, General Titus is the Roman soldier that the Pharisees, Sadducees, Essenes, and Herodians, when they got ready to move, make their move to Rome, they sent Titus to destroy the temple and Jerusalem. And they took captive a lot of the people there and took them to Babylon and to Rome. They had a, a, a huge army that stood on their part. And of course, they ruled the world at one time. And this was also a prophecy of Daniel saying they were going to. But he said they will think uh, in 725, Daniel 725 said that they will think to change times, that's the feast days, and the laws. Well, of course, uh, they, they changed the, the uh, Sabbath day, the, the fourth commandment in your Bible, that's in Exodus 20, uh, it's the Ten Commandments, and if you'll look at the fourth commandment, it says, remember the seventh day, Sabbath to keep it holy. The seventh day is Saturday. It's not Sunday. Well, the commandment says, the law says, remember the seventh day Sabbath. Remember the Sabbath to keep it holy. For, and, and, and he said, the seventh day is the Sabbath of Yahweh. Well, they, they, they uh, changed this and, and they uh, uh, said, uh, Constantine said, we don't want anything in common with uh, the rebels. And he said, uh, so from now on, we're going to worship on the first day of the week in honor of the sun god Baal. The sun god Baal. You know, December the 25th, this big lie about Christmas, you know, and Santa Claus coming down the chimney and flying through the uh, air with, on a, pulled by reindeers on a sleigh and so forth. You know, nothing but lies, of course, but uh, uh, that's in honor, that December 25th. It was never the birthday of the Savior. Uh, the Savior was born in the summertime while they were still herding spring, their spring lambs. And, uh, but December the 25th was chosen in honor of the sun god Baal, Sunday. Sunday was named after the sun god Baal. All of this is worship of Baal or Lord. And the word Baal, it actually means Lord. The word Lord means dead rabbi. <laughs> yes, if you look it up in Unger's Bible Dictionary, it will tell you that that word came, it first came from the Pharaohs, uh, who's a uh, uh, Catholic also, the uh, Egyptian Pharaohs, the, Egypt, the early Egyptians, they call them Coptics, but it's Coptic Catholics. And they teach the same, the same uh, holidays, they teach the same God worship as the, uh, as the Catholics in Rome uh, do. Well, uh, 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 1 Samuel 8 says they brought that worship out of Egypt with them. A certain number of them did. The elders of Israel actually brought that God worship with them the God worship from Egypt. Yahweh is never known as a God. He is the heavenly father uh, who created mankind. He's the creator. His name Yahweh actually means righteousness. 
uh, perfect righteousness. And he has perfect laws that he gave to mankind and said, I will make man in my image after my likeness and I will give him authority over the universe. Now that's in Genesis 1.26. Write that down, please. And also Psalms 8. It shows the plan of Yahweh. Well, here in, in Yachanan now, I was going to show you that the apostle, they named him John in uh, the King James Version, but his name was actually Yachanan. If you look here in chapter 3 and verse 4, it says, Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. Now, we're told in Acts 3, 19, of course, to uh, repent of sin, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. And unless you repent of breaking Yahweh's law, sin is breaking of Yahweh's laws, 1 John 3, 4. Unless you repent of breaking Yahweh's law, well, one of his laws is remember the seventh day Sabbath to keep it holy. That's Saturday. Remember the, sab the Sabbath to keep it holy. It's the seventh day and Yahweh rested from all his works on the seventh day. And he blessed that day and hallowed it. Well, of course, uh, uh, he says here, whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law. Yeah, it's a sin not to keep the Sabbath. If you don't keep the Sabbath, if you don't practice keeping the Sabbath, you're sinning and you're cut off from Yahweh. Acts 3.19 says, repent and be converted that your sins may be blotted out. Revelations 22, 14 said, Blessed are those who keep his laws, that they may have right to the tree of life, and may enter in through the gates into the city. So, thinking to change the laws as Constantine did. This Constantine was a pope, and and of course, this is a Catholic pope. He was a Pharisee, Sadducee, Essene, or a Herodian. They're the ones that controlled the temple in Yeshua's day, in the Savior's day, and in the apostles' time. But in 70, 70 AD, as the Savior prophesied in Matthew 24, Matthew 24, if you have a King James Version, Matthew 24, about verses 3 and 4, he says, don't even look at this temple. Don't even think about this temple as being anything important. He says, the time will come when not one stone will be left standing upon another that will not be cast down. And he said, Mount Zion, well, the prophet said that Zion, where the temple was actually standing at that time, said it will be plowed like a field. Well, that, that's exactly what Titus did. He destroyed the temple. He took the, all the artifacts to Rome, probably the stones too. No one's ever found the stone. But uh, the, the, uh, uh, we, find, we find evidence that Titus actually destroyed the temple and removed all the artifacts to Rome, including the book of Yahweh. The book of Yahweh, Isaiah 34, 16, search out the book of Yahweh and read. Not one of these things will fail. Well, the book of Yahweh, 1 John, also the King James Version, 1 John says, Whosoever commits sin transgresses also the law, for sin is the transgression of the law. Verse 7 says, Little children, let no man deceive you. He who practices righteousness is righteous. But... Verse 8, he who commits sin, righteousness is keeping the law. Breaking the law or practicing breaking the law, whosoever, verse 8, write it down or read it for yourself, he who commits sin or practices committing sin is of the devil. It's the same reading as you see in chapter verse 7, who practices righteousness is righteous. But if you practice breaking the law, that's sin. Sin, and, and when you do, you belong to Satan the devil. You belong to that serpent who also deceived Eve. 
And he's telling you here, don't let any agent, don't let any man deceive you by any means. He says, he who commits sin is of the devil. For the devil has sinned from the beginning. The devil has sinned from the beginning. For this purpose, the son of Yahweh was manifest that he might destroy the works of the devil. Now, of course, Christianity turns that around and makes that like he destroyed the law. But, but no, he, he didn't say he didn't say he was going to destroy the law. He said, Thank not that I have come to destroy the law or the prophet. I have not come to destroy, but to fulfill. He said he came to fulfill, not to destroy the law. And his disciples, in writing this, in writing this, this this was on down after Yahshua was dead and ascended to heaven. And his apostle, Yachanan, who also copied Revelations, was writing this book, 33 AD, I do believe. In, 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 here in, in uh, uh, first, uh, first John 10, he said, in this, in this, either keeping the laws of Yahweh or breaking the laws. If you're keeping the laws of Yahweh, you belong, you're children of Yahweh. Verse 10 says, in this, the children of Yahweh and the children of the devil are made manifest. Whosoever does not practice righteousness is not of Yahweh, nor does he love his neighbor. He said, do you get that? Nor does he love. He has no love for his neighbor. If you don't practice righteousness, you will practice evil. Now that's a fact. For, and, and, and notice, for this, this is the message that was heard, that you heard from the beginning, that we should love one another. That is the laws of Yahweh. They teach love for one another. And if you don't practice those laws, then you don't love your neighbor. In fact, you practice uh, evil. Now, in verse 12, he says, Not as Cain, that who was of that wicked one, he was of Satan the devil, the serpent, Cain was a servant of the, the serpent, the, that, the, the, the devil, uh, as, as uh, Revelation says, she has cast down that old serpent called the devil and Satan, who deceives the whole world. Deceives them just like she did Eve. Uh, saying that you'll live forever, go ahead and break the laws. And of course that's what she's got the whole world doing, is uh, breaking the laws of Yahweh. Verse 11, For this is the message that you have heard from the beginning, that we should love one another, not as Cain. He didn't love his brother. He didn't love his neighbor. He had no love. He was angry. He was, he was uh, uh, bitter and hateful. Yahweh said to him in Genesis 4, about verse 6, Why are you so angry? Why is your countenance fallen? And then he says, if you do righteousness, you will be acceptable. But read on here, not as Cain, who was of that wicked one, who was of Satan the devil, because he's a sinner. He practiced sin. He was a murderer. He murdered his brother. And why did he murder his brother? Because his works were evil and his brother's works were righteous. Do not marvel, my brothers, if the world hates you. If you start keeping the laws of Yahweh, they will. You'll see your neighbors turn against you and shun you if you start keeping the laws of Yahweh. That's a, that's a warning. You embrace yourself for it. But to have salvation, you really need to start keeping the laws of Yahweh. There's no other way. The, uh, there's no, no thing, no scriptures that shows that, that letting the the uh, Roman Catholic Church deceive you into practicing Sunday, into breaking the other laws also, like sodomy. Uh, they took out the second commandment. If you want to read the Ten Commandments, they're in Exodus 20th chapter. He says in verse 14, We know that we have passed from death to life because we love our brothers. And he just got through telling you, 
you got to practice the laws of Yahweh or you don't love your brother. Did you get that? Okay. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Yes, you, you have no eternal life abiding in you. We know that we have passed from death to life because we love, we love the brothers. He who does not love his brother abides in death. Whoever hates his brother is a murderer. And you know that no murderer has eternal life abiding in him. Yes, in fact, no one that breaks the laws of Yahweh. If you don't practice keeping the law, Re Revelations 22, Revelations 22, 14, Blessed are those who keep his laws, that they may have right to the tree of life and may enter in through the gates into the city. Well, in 2 Thessalonians, we're talking about the coming of the Savior and us being gathered together to him and the man of sin being revealed. Now this, of course, is the agent of the serpent called the devil and Satan. The agent. Who is it? Well, Revelation 17 shows that uh, Revelation 17 verses 6 and 9 shows that this is a city that, and verse 18 shows that this is a city that sits on seven hills. If you look up Rome, you'll find out that Rome is, uh, is sets on seven hills. Now that word sets means judges. Verse chapter 17, verse 1 says, Come and I'll show you the sentence of this great whore, this city that sits on seven hills. Calls her a whore, the city. And with whom the kings of the earth have committed fornication, that is, practice God worship. That word fornication, it means practice God worship. Sodomy is a practice of one of the gods that they worship. Uni Catholic means universal, meaning they worship all gods. They don't worship Yahweh, but Yahweh is not a god. But here now in the second chapter of Thessalonians, talking about talking about the, the uh, coming of the Savior. And I want to go through this, this, and I'd, I'm about out of time in this sermon, but look at verse 1 of chapter 2. Now we plead with you, brothers, concerning the coming of the King, Yahshua Messiah, and our gathering together to him. Now he's the one that was speaking in Revelations 22:14. When he said, blessed are those, blessed are those who keep his, that is the Father's laws, Yahweh, the Creator's laws, the Ten Commandments, which the Catholic Church changed. They took out the, seventh, the second commandment, number two, and, they, and uh, you could read it in, your, in the King James Version or the Book of Yahweh. The Book of Yahweh was kept hidden for 1917 years before it was published again. It was taken when the temple was destroyed in 70 AD. They kept it hidden. They wouldn't let anyone print it, read it, or follow it. In fact, it was against the law to keep the seventh day Sabbath. Millions and millions of people were murdered by the Catholic Church, the Vatican, Vatican, by the way, means the divining serpent. Look it up. That's what the word means. It's telling you what she is. The city that sits on seven hills. Revelation 17, 6, 9, and 18. That brings forth the abominations to the earth. Revelations, again, 17. The first five verses tells you that she brings forth abomination. She doesn't bring forth the laws of righteousness. She brings forth abominations to the earth. That man of sin is being revealed right now by the house of Yahweh. The house of Yahweh? The house of Yahweh was destroyed in 70 AD. Yes, it wasn't established again until prophecy said it would be. And prophecy, Micah 4, 1 through 3, says, but in the last days, 
Zion's going to be plowed like a field, he said. It's going to be destroyed. There's that house of Yahweh. You didn't want it. I'm going to take it away from you, Yahweh said. Well, they destroyed the house of Yahweh, moved the artifacts that to Rome, including the book of Yahweh, and it stayed hidden there, unprinted, for 1,917 years. They printed renditions of it, not word for word. They didn't translate it word for word, like the book of Yahweh is translated into English. It's the nearest thing to the original Hebrew there is, the book of Yahweh in English. Published in 1987, 1917 years after it was after the temple was destroyed and, and the book of Yahweh taken to Rome. Isaiah 34, 16. Search out the book of Yahweh and read. Well, you can get this from the King James Version too, not as well because there's a lot of renditions in the King James Version that you won't find in the book of Yahweh. But you can get it there. You can see these same words here that I just read to you. But Micah now, he says, In the last days I will establish my house in the chief of the nations, <laughs> in the chief of the nations, and it will take my message to all the world. In the last day, the Savior says that's the last generation. Matthew 24, verse 33 and 34, he showed the temple was going to be destroyed, but in the last days his message was going to go out Matthew 24, verse 14, said his message will be preached unto all the world, then the end will come. Until next broadcast, may Yahweh bless your understanding. For more information, write The House of Yahweh. Yahweh is spelled Y-A-H-W-E-H. -E Post Office Box 2498 Abilene, Texas 79604 That's The House of Yahweh Post Office Box 2498 Abilene, Texas 79604 Or call 1-800-613-9494 That's 1-800-613-9494 and don't forget to ask for our free monthly magazine, The Prophetic Word.